very warm welcome to Adi's News Hour. I'm Solomon Danye. Thanks for joining me. NDF's call for the people of Tigray to say no to TPLF's belligerence aims to save Tigray's generation of youth from being decimated, says Office of the Prime Minister. In her weekly briefing she gave to the media, Press Secretary of Office of the Prime Minister, Bilene Siyum, has accused the TPLF of forcefully nudging the youth to war. The Press Secretary also highlighted that the TPLF is deliberately blocking aid in the areas it has concurred in the state of uh, Amhara. We have more on this story. The Tigray region cannot sustain loss of an entire generation of youth. In its recent call to the TPLF fighters and the people of Tigray, the Ethiopian National Defense Force pledged amnesty for those who surrendered defying TPLF's belligerence for a senseless war. Reacting on the call while briefing journalists Thursday, Press Secretary of Office of the Prime Minister Bilene Siyum said the people of Tigray should say enough is enough to save their generation of youth from being decimated for nothing. The dynamics are always continually shifting. Um, when this is being made, when this call is being made by the NDF, when this call is being made by the federal government, this is again an expression of humanity, an expression of compassion, um, understanding the, the challenges and the suffering that the people of Tigray are also being subjected to by, by TPLF's uh, um, arrogance and uh, egregious uh, uh, acts and also continued belligerence. This message is uh, received within the, um, the spirit of solidarity that is received within the spirit of understanding that the Tigray region cannot sustain loss of an entire generation of youth um, as is being uh, uh, perpetrated by the TPLF as well. Regarding humanitarian efforts, the press secretary highlighted that the TPLF is deliberately blocking aid in the areas it operates in the state of Amhara making the effort difficult. Assistance to some Waradas in the northern part of Wallo that are besieged by the terrorist group TPLF have been hindered. Uh, as you know, North Wallo is one of the areas under the safety net uh, program and prone to food insecurity. As such, TPLF's hindrance for humanitarian actors to reach uh, civilians in need is worsening the situation. Not only has the terrorist group uh, destroyed the livelihood of people in the region, but it is also holding uh, hostage the people of North Wallo and systematically blocking assistance from reaching uh, these people who are in need. Commenting on the joint independent investigation of the UN and the Ethiopian Human Rights Commission on the alleged atrocities and human rights violations, Bilene said her government hopes that the investigation will include atrocities being committed by the TPLF after the ceasefire. All of these egregious uh, rights violations, uh, particularly in Amhara region and Afar region, and also what is um, happening under the watch of TPLF within the Tigray region, need to also be part of this investigation. So the Ethiopian government holds that. And this has also uh, been shared. So we do hope that there will be an opportunity to address uh, uh, this aspect of it. Nevertheless, um, the Ethiopian government still um, uh, is grateful for the measures uh, that have been taken uh, in terms of uh, ensuring this independent investigation is, uh, had been undertaken on the ground. The press secretary has also expressed Ethiopia's volition to sit down with Egypt and Sudan to talk over the issues of the GERD under the facilitation of the African Union. Eritrean refugees are said to be targeted in the Tigray aimed amid the ongoing conflict in the region. The TPLF fighters are blamed for the killings and human rights abuses in the refugee camps where Eritreans live. Human Rights Watch thus called for urgent protection and assistance after diverging reports on the whereabouts of Eritrean refugees. Alula Teklemarem tells us more. Ethiopia has a long history of providing shelters to refugees from neighboring nations. This includes those coming from Eritrea, hosting approximately 149,000 registered Eritrean refugees. Many were in the northern Tigray region, bordering Eritrea in four campuses, with approximately 20,000 in Hesas and Shimeleba, in northwestern Tigray, and about 31,000 in Mayaini and Adiharish campus. However, those refugee camps turned to be hellish grounds to these refugees who used to be peacefully living for over 20 years. Unfortunately, they have become target of the war broke out in Tigray in November 2020. 
In connection with this, the Human Rights Watch unveiled reports that TPLF fighters kill, rape, and abuse Eritrean refugees in different times. According to the report, on November 23, Tigrayan militia entered Hezaz camp and attacked refugees. Clashes between the militia fighters and Eritrean soldiers ensued in and around the camp, lasting several hours. Nine refugees were killed and 17 badly injured. One refugee said the Tigrayan militia fighters killed her husband as their family tried to seek shelter inside the church. Two dozen residents in Hezaz town were also reportedly killed during and after the clashes that day. The Tigran militia retreated from Hezaz after the fighting. It is to be recalled that the UNHCR and the UN Refugee Agency have been expressing concerns about the fate of thousands of Eritrean refugees currently trapped into two refugee camps in Ethiopia's Tigray region as fighting between armed groups escalated in and around the camps. An estimated 24,000 Eritrean refugees in Mayaini and Adi Harush camps in Tigray's Maizabri area are facing intimidation and harassment and living in constant anguish. Cut off from humanitarian assistance, urgent protection and assistance is thus recommended to reach out those refugees. Ethiopians are aggressively joining and signing White Envelope to White House movement which stays for 15 days. The petition is meant to clarify confusions to the U.S. and the rest of the world. Deputy Coordinator of the National Movement, Aklilu Tardesa, told TV that the movement is instrumental in discharging responsibilities of citizenship. Daniel Kassel reports. The National Youth Movement among a few fellows appear from informal talks to serious intervention. White envelope flirt to the White House movement. Beginning Wednesday, now it has become a national platform and all Ethiopians are joining it, including well-known figures from the athletes, the artists and from the contesting parties and from government officials, among others. Inside the envelope is a letter to President Joseph Biden, clearly discussing real situations of Ethiopia in brief. Deputy Director of the National Movement, Taklil told ETV, the movement is instrumental to discharging responsibilities of citizenship. There is, there is maybe some issues that we, we cooperate, we integrate, but such kinds of uh, uh, intervening on the internal issues is unacceptable in Ethiopian citizens, in Ethiopian context. We, uh, we, we respect America, we respect our relation, but uh, we don't need to compromise on our internal issue, on our sovereignty, on our uh, uh, territorial integrity. This should be known in all of the, the international community, including of the United Nations of America. White envelope flood to White House movement will have indispensable significance in countering biased reports of several international media and organizations regarding the current situation in Ethiopia. The main objective of this mobilization is uh, to disclose the factors uh, undertaken in Ethiopia, uh, especially the, the, the Western countries and some of the medias including of the, the, the government officials and statements uh, didn't clearly understand what's going in Ethiopia. Akhilu attested Ethiopians should stand in unison to expose the, to the world machinations of the terrorist TPLF to dismantle Ethiopia and disrupt peace and security of the region at large. Especially the, the terrorist uh, TPLF uh, was uh, doing all all evils in Ethiopia uh, by those the last 30 years, and now uh, the terrorist group is uh, marginalized from the Ethiopian political platform. Uh, but 
doing all 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 the evils which is which we can uh, say that the, the the extension of what uh, it was doing in last 30 years uh, but Ethiopians have many factors regarding so the Americans uh, should skip our internal issue to us the letter urges the United States government to stand with the truce, considering long-standing relationships of the two countries, which transcends short-term government policies that varies from one leader to the other. I'm now joined here by my colleague, uh, Aftama Shagri, who is going to update us about the training issues in the past uh, 24 hours. Thank you for having you, Aftama. Thank you very much. So what can you tell us about the issues that have been making headlines in the past 24 hours? There are a lot of issues are raised on the past 24 hours. The first one is about White Post fled to the White House. Mm. And this campaign is uh, orchestrated by the government of Ethiopia and Ethiopians. And uh, I do know that the Western, some Western countries are always blaming the federal government in the law enforcement operation and the survival operation in the northern part of Ethiopia. Mm -hmm. And they are interpreted wrongly the federal government due to the law enforcement operation against the Tpelev fighters or forces. Mm -hmm. And they are planning to express their ideas to the White House, especially to just the wrong interpretation of the, the federal government by those USA and other European countries like uh, Britain and so on and so on. Uh, especially this campaign is targeted on to change ideas how they are wrongly interpreted Ethiopians and they are magnifying the wrong actors of the Tpele forces, especially the violation of human rights, the killing of innocent civilians, mm. mass displacements and also with mass looting and with aggression in the state of Afar and Amhara and the killing of those children and recruiting children as a soldier to uh, using as a soldier in uh, the fight between the PLF and the federal forces and uh, they are planning to send five million white posters to the White House and a lot of institutions, politicians, mm -hmm. the government's near officials, users and various regional states also take part in this campaign. Mm. Well, uh, Abdamu, thank you for your information. Thank you very much. Thank The most uh, notorious public face of the terrorist TPLF, Gitacho Redda, revealed the group's nightmarish plan of controlling Addis Ababa and uh, forming a free Tigray state. During a lengthy interview with the LCC sponsored 10 TV channel, Gitacho shamelessly rambled on and on about the TPLF's victory in several areas, while the group is in fact suffering heavy casualties and has fled the entire a far state. Let's see the details as follows. Yes, thank you, thank you. During what looks very much like a stage managed interview with carefully designed and TPLF blessed questions forwarded to Getacho, an out and outlaw was presented about the reality in the war front. While the TPLF has heavily lost battles in the Wolkite, the Brezevit, Nefas Mocha, Mersa, and various other parts of the Amhara state and fled after heavy defeats in Afar, Getacho told the 10 his trumped up story of TPLF victorious in several places. 
leveling all sorts of accusations against the Ethiopian government, none of which he or any other Western body has so far corroborated. He went on the threat of other wave of attack against both Amhara and Afar sets. It's to be recalled that some Egyptian pandits recently dressed down the TPLF for fleeing out of Afar. Gitacho tried to upstage the laws in Afar by renting about series of assaults to take place in both Afar and Amhara with the view to weaken the Abi regime. We uh, have been fighting uh, this war against uh, Abi Ahmed. And Since June, uh, we have launched an offensive. In fact, Gita Choreda is so used to accusing Abi with all sorts of lies, including selling the gird to Egypt. Following the footsteps of the estranged leader of the TPLF, Debra's young Gabra Mikhail, Getacho talked of TPLF's possible foray into Addis Ababa. He said the foray is needed to annihilate the enemy once and for all. Gitach also touched on the latest unholy alliance between his group and that of the OLF Shani, adding that the TPLF is willing to strike a coalition with any group interested in toppling a disabba. <laughs> Gitach also referred to TPLF's dream of a free Tigray state, not saying a word about how this could come about given the constitutional challenge and the possibility of military victory, which is far fetched. Briefing a journalist Thursday, spokesperson of Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Ambassador Dina Mufti said the Ethiopian Human Rights Commission delegation met with the Office of UN High Commissioner for Human Rights on the activities carried out in investigating alleged human rights issues in the northern part of Ethiopia. The joint investigation process is being finalized and the final report will be released in November, he added. Dina Mufti has also highlighted the purpose of the 10-day long staff training the ministry is giving. With regard to the capacity building, as you know, Ethiopian diplomats based abroad and uh, uh, those working in the head office are undertaking a capacity building performance here. Uh, there were presentations by, uh, on, on various issues, especially on the issues regarding the reform, the reform at the national level, the reform at the, 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 the current situation, international situation. Uh, the challenges and the tasks that the diplomats will face ahead uh, and they have been briefed on, 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 on various um, uh, <coughs> subjects. Um, this will, will continue for 10 days. The objective of this exercise is actually to strengthen the capacity of dip our diplomats and to strengthen, strengthen their ability to deliver uh, by way of uh, uh, promoting national interest whenever they are assigned. And there will be also restructuring the, our institutions, both embassies and the head office, in view of uh, uh, creating efficiency uh, and uh, diligence. So this capacity building will continue. Actually, this is the first phase. The second phase will continue with others. Uh, other diplomats who have not participated now will come uh, hopefully after this one is completed. Food and Agriculture Organization FAO says it will work to rehabilitate farmers 
in the Amhara state who have been displaced because of TPLF's uh, incursions. A representative of the Food and Agricultural Organization of the United Nations in Ethiopia, Fatuma Said, has discussed with the chief of the Amhara state, Agenyo Tashaga, the possibility of providing humanitarian assistance to those affected people by the terrorist group. Agenyo briefed the FAO delegation about the severity of the situation and called on the organization to provide immediate humanitarian assistance. North Zolo, Nwag, North Gondar, in some part of uh, uh, South Zolo, uh, some part of South Gondar, were uh, just under the aggression, you know. Most of the farmers are under the safety net program, you know. They are food insecure, you know. Uh, you know, it's just, uh, you know, famine is already occurred in that area. More than 551,000 people are already displaced, you know, IDPs, you know. This most of the people are living with their families uh, and uh, in IDP centers around Dabar, around the same something. Fatuma Said, the representative of FAO to Ethiopia on her part expressed readiness of her organization to rehabilitate farmers who have been disrupted by the terrorist group in the state. Yes, we are concerned that now this is the time that the farmers should be engaging in, uh, in their farms and, you know, unfortunately it's true that this is, uh, disturbance is happening at this moment where it will, it is affecting and will affect the uh, food insecurity. So we will see with our colleagues and we will talk to our partners and donors how we can support during the bank for those families to plant. Ethiopian artifacts, including a Bible, crosses, and an imperial shield looted at the Battle of Magdala in 1868, are to be returned to Ethiopia thanks to the Scheherazade Foundation, which purchased the items through a UK-based auction house and private dealers. The embassy will make uh, arrangements for the items to be returned to Ethiopia. Miti BC has caught up with the CEO of the Sheherez Foundation, Tahir Shah, who stressed on the importance of the artifacts to Ethiopians. Right, and yeah, you know, song. it pleased me very greatly that it was just around the time of the Ethiopian New Year, which gave us an added cause for celebration. And for us, the Sherazad Foundation, the repatriation of these objects is all about that. It is about celebration. And um, we're hoping that it will inspire other people to repatriate objects within their own collections. Tahir Shah said he knew what the return of the objects would mean to Ethiopians and that through his foundation, he hopes to build a strong bridge between Ethiopia and the foundation. I read in the newspapers uh, after our repatriation ceremony in London, I read in the newspapers that this was the largest repatriation of Magdala objects, treasures ever. And it filled me with, it filled, filled me with warmth and pride because of the Sherazad Foundation, which I run, We've worked very hard, obviously, to acquire these objects and, um, and to draw attention to Magdala and um, the injustices. But at the same time, it filled me with shock and horror because we repatriated about 20 or so objects. And this is the tip of the iceberg. At Magdala, the British took many thousands, maybe tens of thousands of objects, some of them the most priceless and sacred <laughs> objects within the Ethiopian um, culture. And it horrifies us that a repatriation of 20 objects or so is suddenly um, deemed as the most significant repatriation in 153 years. There's something wrong about that. And what we want to do is to inspire other people to return objects as well. The Embassy of Japan in Ethiopia signed 173,810 US dollar worth grant contract 
to make expansion works at a secondary school in southern and Sidama regions. Japanese ambassador to Ethiopia Ito Takako on the occasion underscored the need to invest on children and education for future development of the country. According to the ambassador, the projects invested in education of children in the country have the potential to further deepen friendship between the people of Japan and Ethiopia. The projects are also aligned with the quality education target set in the Sustainable Development Goals, she pointed out. Children are the foundation for the future development of a country. Providing basic education for children is not only for the development of children themselves, but also an important investment for the country's future. In addition, I'm very confident that these projects will align with the goals set by the Sustainable Development Goals, particularly Goal 4, Quality Education. A few weeks ago, I visited a secondary school in Sidama region and learned that a lot of children were studying in a condition that lacks enough classrooms or uh, lacks good school furniture such as desks and chairs. I express that new school buildings will help children to feel happy to come to school and enjoy learning. The actual implementations of these projects begin today. I expect that these two NGOs, the TESF Foundation and the Resurrection and Life Development Organization will maintain smooth communication with the embassy during the implementation process and that they complete this project as swiftly as possible for the benefit of the children. Lastly, I strongly hope that this project signed today will further deepen the friendship between the people of Japan and the people of Ethiopia. And then the Giziats in Daolon of Hasanacho, Mogadacho Baratan. And then the Giziats, Wajaban Nacho, Maabelacho Gasfal. And then the Giziats, Isatanacho, Wellafanacho and Gilad. And then the Giziats, yet ornet Nacho, yet offer Filmos. አንዳንድ ጊዜያት ይሁሉ አልፎ የጸጥታ ይሆናሉ ሰላም በመድሪቱ ላይ ነክሳል ጊዜ ይለዋወጣል እኛ ግን ጸንተን እንቆማለን ሀገር ማለት እኛ ነን አምባሳደር and the permanent representative of Ethiopia to the United Nations Tayaz Kasalase hails UNSC's referral of the GERD to the trilateral negotiation on the AU-led process appropriate. Ambassador Taye noted that the decision shows the position of the Council on the consideration of the issue as a water right and water development issue. At a breast account, we have underlined that the most important issue the two sisterly repairing countries shall be ready to deal with is a rule-based order on the Nile Basin, whereby each of the 11 repairing countries will utilize their share from the resource Ambassador Taye underlined. The Ethiopian Kebara drum, I came in playing the Ghanaian dundo to represent the unity in Africa. We can never talk about unity without talking about Ethiopia. Welcome to Addis Ababa, the home of the African Union and the capital town of Ethiopia. Two great men, a sergeant for Dr. Kwame Nkrumah and the Emperor Haile Selassie I were very instrumental in the formation of the Organization of African Unity, now known as the African Union. These two understood that together we stand, divided we fall. May the souls of these great Pan-Africanists go marching on. Tonight, I am going to be taking you through a cultural, historic and insightful tour to Ethiopia. When you come to Ethiopia, there are sites that you might want to visit, some of which include the Simeon National Park, with its high peaks, deep valleys, and sharp precipices, stretching over 1,500 
meters. You might also want to visit the ruins of Aksum, which represents the heart of ancient Ethiopia, when the kingdom of Aksum was the most powerful between the Eastern Roman Empire and Persia. You might also want to visit Tyre, which is an archaeological site in the center of Ethiopia, south to Addis Ababa. Ethiopia prides itself in its diverse landscape and rich culture, which is why you might want to visit so many cities in Ethiopia, some of which include Addis Ababa, Mabel, Landibela, Gondar, just to mention a few. Ethiopia, being the second most populated country in Africa, is the only country that has never been colonized by the West. The Italians tried to create a colonial crack on Africa through Ethiopia, but were defeated at the Battle of Adura. They hid on the hills looking down at the valleys of Adura with their guns, bows, and arrows, and defeated the Italians. Did you know that Ethiopia is the only country with a 13 calendar system? What does this even mean? This means that when everybody else in the world has 12 months in the year, there are 13 months in Ethiopia. This is why I'm seven years younger, because while all of you are in the year 2021, it is still 2014 in Ethiopia. Interesting, isn't it? In fact, yesterday, September 11th, was a new year in Ethiopia. Now come at this Ahmed. You're watching at this news hour. West African bloc Ecos said it would meet again to discuss possible steps after Guinea's president was ousted in coup earlier this month, Ghana's foreign minister said. On Wednesday, the army rulers held talks with the country's civil society a day after meeting with politicians and leaders of political parties. Ecos already suspended Guinea last week after a special forces commander toppled 83-year-old President Alpha Conde calling his ulster a clear violation of the group's regional charter. A delegation from the 50-member ECOWAS group was sent to Conakry to meet with coup leader Lieutenant Colonel Mamati Domboye, visit Conde and demand a civilian-led transition. Ghana Foreign Minister Shule Ayoko Bochoe, who led the mission, said Thursday's extraordinary summit would review the delegation's findings and decide next steps for Guinea's return to the constitutional rule, that is according to African News. Before we go, a quick reminder of our top stories. Eritrean refugees said to be abused and killed by TPLF fighters. And TPLF still fantasizes about controlling Addis Ababa and forming a free Tigray state. Well, that's it for the news for me, Solomon Dania and the rest of the English team here in the studio. Thanks for watching.